Welcome to the Positive Productivity Podcast, episode number 68. Welcome to Positive Productivity Podcast, where we empower our audience to achieve and appreciate personal and professional success, especially in the face of adversity. Listen in as our guests reveal their stories of challenges and hurdles and how they overcame defeat and became triumphant in their endeavors. Let's get motivated and move forward with your host, Kim Sutton. Welcome to another episode of Positive Productivity. This is your host, Kim Sutton. And today I'm thrilled to have Chris Worth from No Quit Living with us. Chris is the president and founder, and No Quit Living is a speaking, training, and coaching business where Chris and his team try to help individuals and companies achieve their ultimate level of success in all areas of their life. I absolutely love that. Welcome, Chris. How are you today? Uh, welcome. I'm I'm doing great today. It's 72 degrees here, so I uh, couldn't be doing any better. No way. I have my space heater on. To, to... Well, I, uh, I'm, <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry to hear that, but we lucked out with a couple of, uh, of great days here, so I, uh, I'm definitely enjoying it. Oh, I, I'll take some of that. Send it back west. <laughs> Chris, can you give listeners a background on what you do, even more than just no quit living, and how you started no quit living sure uh, i think a a good background is i have been an avid sports fan fanatic my whole life uh, my father taught me coached me growing up and i played high school basketball and i played basketball and tennis in college and i coached high school and uh college basketball excuse me and i've just always been a, a fan of reading and listening and watching different people, whether they're coaches, individuals. And I became a big fan of the personal development, I guess, industry, if you want to call it. And I've been an avid reader and following many different people. And a few years ago, I got certified in 2011 at the first ever John Maxwell team training coaching seminar down in August in Florida of 2011. And I just became very passionate about helping other people. A couple of my mentors or individuals such as Zig Ziglar, who I was very fortunate to speak with and exchange letters prior to him passing a couple of years ago. John Maxwell, obviously, who I spent quite a few uh, days down in Florida with, and then was very fortunate to have spent about four hours with John Wooden back in 2005, where we, my wife, my girlfriend at the time, my parents and I had dinner with him, and then he invited us back to his home, and I spent four hours with him that night. That was just unbelievably life-changing and motivating in many ways. And along the way, I've always been looking at those individuals and people that truly believe in helping others for the right reasons. And Zig Ziglar has a saying where he says you can help, you can have anything you want in life if you just help enough other people get what they want. And that's really kind of our motto as far as helping others, whether it's individuals, families, teams, or companies. And it's something that I created No Quit Living about three years ago, and it's been just a blast working with individuals and trying to get our name out there. And the community is just unbelievable as far as, as how you can get out there and how quickly and how easy it is to connect. And I think our story of how we connected is just another example of people that really understand what I feel is the law of attraction. And I kind of have a tweak to that where, where we discussed a positive law of attraction and gratitude. And I feel that if you really have a positive mindset in helping others and doing the right thing, that eventually it comes back to you. And that's not ever the reason I don't think why you do something is to have it come back to you. But I truly believe in the karma concept that if you are really doing your best to help people and for their reasons, that eventually it comes back to you tenfold. Oh, absolutely. And for the audience to know, it was I don't want to say crazy, but it was sort of crazy. Chris is in Greenwich, Connecticut, where I worked just prior to moving to Ohio in 2004. And of all places, we worked in the same exact building at the same time. Yep. At the same we were, time, what? just one floor <laughs> apart. And this was only a, what, a two or three story building. It's not like there were tons of offices in there. I mean, my the floor I was on only had our office. No, on the floor I had had uh, only our office. So literally, we were uh, on the second and third floor. So I'm sure we indirectly passed and walked by in the same elevator many times. Yeah, definitely, and or at least just on Greenwich Avenue. <laughs> 
You had some exciting news just recently. I mean, you've you've just launched your podcast. You you have a lot going on. People are reaching out to you. You've had so much going on in your other businesses. How have you kept yourself positive and productive through it all? I mean, I know you said that you're an avid reader. You've had all these awesome mentors. But are there any tools or practices that you use on a daily basis to keep you going? It's a great it's a great question. A very very long, probably about a seven layer question. But no, I, I think that's that's an awesome question that I get asked quite often. And to your comment, I, I do a lot of different things. I'm involved in a lot of different businesses. I have a wife and three young kids and I try to stay very active. But I've been very fortunate to have been introduced to many different people, as you mentioned, mentors, but also different tools and things. And one of the things that I really began looking at uh, about a year or so ago was Hal Elrod's program, The Miracle Morning. And then John Lee Dumas had his 100-day program. And it really got me thinking about how I go about my daily life and how busy it gets. And what I created was a my daily dozen. It's what, what I call my, my 12 top things every day. And I've basically copied, pasted, stolen, changed, tweaked from so many different people over the last couple of years. And I'm always changing it. But for those that are interested, I can send that, I can send that to them as well. But it's basically a two-page sheet that I've created. And, and as I mentioned, I, I can't ever say that I, I created everything myself. And I don't think anybody that's all, unbelievably successful ever creates everything themselves. I think they've all had many wonderful people helping them. But my point is that for me, I'm a very visual person. I love electronics. I'm very tech savvy. I have both an iPhone as well as a a Samsung phone. So I think I stay up to date in, in some of those things. But for me, it was really important to have something that I could have on paper, physical. So I created this two page document front and back. And it's something I do the night before. And I look at it so I can start my day with the right mindset. And it's something that I also conclude the night of. So for example, this morning, I went through the beginning process of my day, and I have my two page sheet. And then tonight, before I go to bed, I will flip to the second page and kind of wrap up my day. And again, taking a lot of these things that I've been very fortunate to to have been introduced to. But one of the things you mentioned, I just wanted to briefly touch on is I've been extremely fortunate in my life to have some some very significant mentors. And I think you and I spoke about it about a, a couple of weeks ago and we spoke about six degrees of separation and our one degree of separation. And my, our motto, and maybe I can go into that later, but I've just been really fortunate to have been able to connect with some, some great people that have been more than willing to give me some time, whether it's five, 10, 20 minutes, or some people it's coffees or lunches two, three, four times. And I just literally try to take as much from them as I can. John Maxwell who's a big mentor of mine and being part of his team in the certification program always talks about when he interviews people and he meets with people, he always asks them, are they reading anything good? You know, what have they been introduced to recently that's had a positive impact on their life? And that's one of the things I really try to do day in and day out is just learn. And I think, unfortunately, a lot of people feel that their learning stops after high school or college. But for me, ironically, I enjoyed school and I, and I did well, I think (laughs) in school, but after high school and college is when I think a lot of learning really takes takes into place. But I'm, I'm really excited about the launch of the podcast. I've got some great guests. Uh, again, some of these mentors have agreed to be guests. Some of them have already recorded some episodes. So I'm just really, really excited about it. And I'm really fortunate and grateful for people like you that are willing to, to help others get their name and, and their word out there. And like I said, that's the biggest thing to me is, is the community that I think we all play in in some ways is that just I've encounter so many people that are just unbelievably positive and outgoing and really willing to spend some time with somebody. I think that's the really cool thing about a podcast episode is that, you know, five, 10 years ago, if you wanted to interview somebody or record something, you had to physically go to their city or they had to physically be in your city. And that's really tough to say to somebody, okay, you know what, let me come to your office or you come to my office and we'll spend an hour, two hours, maybe depending on travel, three hours as opposed to with, with Skype and with FaceTime and things like that, there's the ability to really connect with people on a much easier way where literally you could be having an interview, you know, sitting in, you know, in your boxer shorts or your, you know, underwear and nobody knows it because of technology today. So I think that's the one other thing too, is that as technology improves, it makes a lot of things easier than it was five, 10, 15 years ago. 
Absolutely. And when we talked a couple of weeks ago, it was probably for an hour or an hour and a half. And I realized really quickly that we're both the same way. I mean, we give without really too much expectation of giving back because it's our personalities. And, and it, I do believe it will come back in some way, even if it is a mentor who will just spend a little bit of time with us. But I love even just virtual coffee for a half hour and a back and forth conversation of not only how can you help me, but how can I help you? And it, it's so valuable just to connect with people with no expectation of getting anything except for building that relationship. No, I could not agree more. We talked a little bit pre-show about the fact that both of us have a four hour work week sitting on our shelves and we joked about how we're each going to take half of it and get it done and then compare notes. But besides four hour work week, what are you reading right now? That's a great question. And I have to admit that I have a very bad habit of reading a lot of books at once. Uh, I made a resolution for myself in 2016 to read only two books at a time. Um, and unfortunately, um, that I've failed miserably. But right now, I'm actually rereading Think and Grow Rich by Napoleon Hill. I am reading a really good book. It's called Hell Week by Eric Larson. And it's an unbelievable uh, book uh, in many ways. And I'm also reading uh, 5% More which is, uh, I have it right here on my desk, it's by Michael Alden. And the other one that I just picked up was Grant Cardone's new book that came out uh, end of October of 2016, which is Be Obsessed or Be Average. And so right now, those are my four that I'm, that I'm reading, and I'm hoping to, to finish them. But like I said, I have a bad habit of really enjoying a lot of books and a lot of reading. But what I do when I read a book is... I underline it, I circle things, I highlight, I fold pages down, and I always take things out. So it's funny, my my habit of reading and being a voracious reader comes back sometimes where a client will come into my office and they'll see some books and say, oh, I love that book, can I borrow it? And unfortunately, I've let people borrow it and they give it back to me immediately and say, I, I couldn't read anything, it's, it's impossible to read. So what I'll eventually do is usually buy a copy of that book for somebody and give it to them, which is, I feel is kind of a, a really neat neat thing to do. And one of my, th one of the things I do with both no quit living as well as my wealth management firm is I gift a lot of books to people. And I believe that if you write inside, you know, a little note to somebody that you know, once they open and they read it, it's a really neat thing. And, and we do as a firm, a ton of handwritten notes. And I think that's a hidden secret that most people don't use now. But I can tell you that I was with a client last week and they had a, one of my letters on their desk. And they said, you know, I just want to tell you that the only thing I ever get in the mail are bills. And I just want to thank you because you sent me something in the mail that was not a bill. It was a handwritten note as well as a book. And they they were reading it. And that's always fun. And, and what I, the book I had give, given them was The Secret, which I think all of us have read or know of or been introduced to. But it's just, you know, the, the philosophy I said before of the karma is, you know, when you give back to people for the right reasons, I think – you know, eventually it comes back and it might not come back to you directly. Maybe it comes back to one of your children or a friend or family member. But I think when you really go about trying to help people and share information or knowledge, that's the really fun part. And I think that's to your comment earlier is even if you have a virtual coffee for 30 minutes, people can always give each other something. And it might not be something that's monetary, it might not be something that's physical. Maybe it's just an idea, a suggestion. Maybe it's a link to a website or to an author or something to read. But I think in today's day and age with technology and what it is, it's so easy to, to really try to help people and you never know where it's going to lead. And, and to your comment and how we ironically were literally working in the same building. It's just, it's so funny and so small how, how the world really is, is just connected in so many ways. I love the fact that you send out gifts or cards or books to people and Listeners, if you haven't listened to it, after you're finished listening to this episode, I want you to go and listen to episode 28, which you can find at DougKimSutton.com forward slash PP028. It's an interview with Courtney Daniel, and she's actually a custom card creator who makes cards for just that very reason, because her clients have seen tremendous success actually sending out handwritten, homemade cards made by Courtney, but um, they're, 
they love it. And and her name is getting spread because her client's name is getting spread thanks to those cards. So every time somebody does something for you, if it's hiring you, if it's just doing something kind, take that minute or two to say thank you in whatever if way I it could, happens. That's, if I could just interject for a second, I could not agree more. One thing I did forget um, that I did want to mention, there's a book. It's called um, Giftology. It's by John Rulin, R-U-H-L-I-N, and his company, actually, they teach people how to actually give gifts and things, and it, it was a very, very quick, easy read. But, but my point is that um, he just talks about going the extra way, and he, he does some big account and big things, and he has some, some very influential people like Jeffrey Gittimer and Matthew Kelly that, are, that wrote comments on the back of his book. But my point is, and I could not agree more with what you said, and, and it's, it's funny – People really love to get to get a a gift, and I think the woman that you just mentioned, I actually wrote wrote her stuff down because I'm definitely going to uh, going to check her out too because I think that's an unbelievable skill, and and it's not something that takes ten hours, and it's not something that costs you know thousands upon dollars. What does it cost you? A dollar or two to to buy a card or a couple cards, and then you know fifty cents to mail it out. It's it, but it's the thought that means so much to somebody, and you never know a little impact could really change someone's day from having a good day to an amazing day or maybe having a terrible day to having a okay day. Oh, absolutely. And I'm just like your client. The only thing I ever get in the mail, really. Hey, I'll accept fan mail, just so you know, listeners. <laughs> <laughs> the only thing I ever get in the physical mail really is uh, bills or, at the time of this recording, political stuff, <laughs> which I can't wait to get through this election. So anything like that would be awesome. And it's such a terrible tease. I I just had to put in there. It's such a terrible tease when you get something that looks like it's handwritten, but it's actually <laughs> not. It's electric. It's electrically printed and reminding you that, you know, the warranty on your car is up. So here's a fake greeting card to remind you to send us money. No, thanks. Don't send me any of those. I will pass. <laughs> I am just like you, though, Chris. I... I'm really trying to read only one or two books at a time. And I cannot get out of that pattern of reading four or more. And just earlier this week, I finally finished The Miracle Morning. Not that I haven't been trying to practice it, trying being the keyword uh, in my life. My hardest part is even just getting out of bed in the morning some days because I... <laughs> Hell, yep, Hell Elrod talks about putting your alarm clock across the room so that you have to get out of your bed to turn it off. Yeah, that's, I think that's a great idea. And, and, and people talk about that all the time as far as setting it 10, 20 feet away so you actually have to physically get up. My concern doing that, though, is just like you. I mean, I have young children. And if I'm getting up that early, I do not want their company. So I keep it next to me so that I don't wake them up in the time that it takes <laughs> for me to hear. But I have at least switched it to being music alarm and a music. Oh, let me try that again. A musical alarm on my iPhone versus the eh, 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 right. And you know, I don't. I don't know if you've seen it, but there's. I saw it on Facebook. There's an alarm clock. It's somehow it's connected to a pad that's next to your bed, where you it only goes off when you physically get up and stand out of bed. I don't know if you've seen that, but it's, I it's... have not seen it. I am going to have to search <laughs> for that and put it in the show notes. That is absolutely <laughs> fantastic. Yeah, I have not used it, full and fair disclosure, but it, it's popped up a couple times on, on Facebook. And I think it's maybe because I know Facebook knows what you read and different type of things you search. So maybe it was something with John Lee Dumas or with the Miracle Morning by Hal Elrod. But I remember seeing it. It was, it was pretty interesting as far as. I don't know the company name, but if I if I find it or see it, I'll definitely I'll definitely send it over. That is going straight into my Amazon wish list. <laughs> I am also making the transition this year of getting away from ebooks because I'm really trying to read every day before bed, and I don't want to be looking at a screen to do it. I've done a lot of personal development this year, and I don't remember who it was. It might have been Brendan Burchard talking about taking yourself away from your screen at least an hour before you go to sleep. So I've been switching to physical copies of books 
it sounds like that's what you read as well. Are you also reading ebooks or are you mostly physical copies? You know, it's funny, but I um I have a an iPad and I have some I get some iBooks, but I just always end up marking up books and things. So unfortunately, um, I'm still old school in regards to the actual physical books. But I think you mentioned something that's really interesting is I think so many people don't realize the impact of the devices and they have as far as your, your sleep cycle and things like that. And in no way, shape or form, am I, am I an expert on, on sleeping? But it's something that I've actually been reading up a lot more recently. And I think it's very interesting that so many people, and I was 100% guilty of it, I would either jump on my iPad or my phone or I, uh, my Mac or watching TV before I go to bed. And I would realize that even when I was getting really, really tired, it still took me quite a while to fall asleep. So that's one of the things, too, it's funny you say that, that I've really been working on is really trying to put the device down. And, and it's funny, but next to my um, nightstand, next to my alarm clock, I have probably three or four different books that I try to pick up and actually read before I go to bed. Do you have a solution for, for keeping your kids away from your highlighters or your pens? Um, I, I do not. My, my kids are, are, are pretty good in many ways. I am um, a big collector of pens. Uh, that's, one of my, uh, that's one of my hobbies, both nice pens, fancy pens, but more importantly, just pens that write well. So my, my oldest son, who happens to be uh, eight, he has uh, kind of taken up the pen as well. So I will bring quite a few pens home. So I always have enough for my three kids so they don't steal the ones that I'm using or having. But sometimes just by default, you know, they'll find one that they really like. And all of a sudden I have to either buy a new one for myself or I just give it to them because it's, uh, it's, it is what it is. I, I, one thing I uh, just wanted to ask is, have you read or, or um, heard of the sleep revolution by Ariana Huffington? I haven't. And I'm definitely going to have to look it up just based on the title. You're not yeah, helping no, my, uh, my sticking to one or two books. Just so well, you, you know. said one or two. So I figured I'd give you at least <laughs> oh, 10 or 12. I'm, to really <laughs> I'm reading. I, I have three or four that I'm already trying to get through and I'm, <laughs> we should start a book club. You know, it's funny. So my, one of my clients said to me, he said, you should start a book club and somehow just charge different authors to give you ideas and books because you always talk about books. Um, but the reason I just me mentioned that, that that book by Aaron Huffington is a good friend of mine is the chairman of a local foundation here in Greenwich. And last, I think it was last August, she came and spoke at a women's lunch and, and they gave everybody copies of her books. And I'm only, unfortunately about 40 pages into it but it's very very interesting as far as really what goes into sleeping and how many people are actually way more tired than they actually know they are because of lack of sleep as opposed to you know thinking they're stressed or busy and, and it just makes you think about but to your point is is I, i'm very guilty of of going to bed and looking at my phone and ipad and things i've been really trying to turn them off an hour or so before bed but unfortunately i probably only do that about 10% of the time. Oh, I don't even turn mine off. I just turn it to, I have it set up to go to the do not disturb mode after 10 o'clock. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah. I know it's on the iPhone that you can do that. I'm not sure about Android though, but my quality of sleep has increased so much just by doing that one simple practice. And the quality of the work I'm producing has increased so much just by getting more sleep. Really? Which is ridiculous because I was staying up longer and only sleeping three to four hours a night consistently for almost a year and a half. But the call, it was making me really anxious. And that's when I realized I needed to change. But as soon as I made that switch, the quality in my production level went up so much that even though there's days or weeks that things get crazy and I can't sleep seven or eight hours a night. I always try my best to get back to it as soon as possible. No, I, that's something I'm trying to do um, throughout 2017 is just to get more consistent sleep schedule. Cause to your point is I think you get more anxious, you get more stressed, but I think when you talk about productivity, there's no way that anybody could, I don't think prove that, you know, you can be just as productive on two or three hours of sleep as you can on a consistent basis. Well, have you ever seen the studies where they show people driving who are drunk as opposed to lack of sleep? 
Yeah, that's that's unbelievable as to how ac- how similar they are, and you would not know based on thinking that you know when you're impaired. I mean, whether it's with alcohol or something else, but it, it's dissimilar, almost the same when you are are sleep deprived. And I, I think that study has been uh, has been shown in so many ways how it's so dangerous. And most people that drive late at night, a lot of them are driving for work and things, and they're just tired. And that's when a lot of times they have accidents and things, but I think that's a, it's a really fascinating concept of, of really the quality of sleep. And I know with the new iWatches and some of those Fitbit and Garmin type things, I know they can track how actually accurate your sleep is and how, you know, you get into your deep REM mode, but it's really interesting as far as the study. So that's another book that I will try to uh, try to get through and maybe I'll only be reading six or seven at a time as opposed to 12. (laughs) So on that note, what's, what would you say was your most impactful book read in 2016? That's a that's a good that's a good question. I think if I had to say the most impactful book that I read in 2016 was probably I read the it's a good question. I read The Secret again, uh, although I've read it before, but what I also read, is, which came out in, again, is, is 2016, was How the Secret Changed My Life, which is also by Rhonda Byrne. And it was just – that book has individual stories of people that have utilized the secret in their life. And I think it just reiterated to me that in today's day and age, and to you, to your comment earlier, the one thing that this past election has, has shown me personally is, is the over overlapping negativity that just comes – in the media nonstop. And I believe that most people don't realize how a positive attitude can, can affect your day. And I think those two books, rereading the secret, but then also reading, as I mentioned, how the secret changed my life, the follow-up to the, to the secret, it just reiterated to me the importance of making sure that whether you're having a good day, bad day, an average day is, you know, you can always make it better and you can always improve whatever you're going through with a positive mindset. And that's one of the things that I really try to teach myself, my kids, but I also talk about it with, with my clients, both No Quit Living as well as my wealth management firm. And, and even if you can make a positive impact on one person's day, you have no idea how many people they might encounter over that day or over that evening. And just by going out of your way to, to be a little bit more positive and respectful of people, I think it just has a, has a massive impact. And it's, it's tenfold when you really make the decision to do it for the right reasons, which is, you know, just smile at somebody or hold the door open for somebody. And you have no idea what positive impact that could have on that person's life. But then maybe they encounter five, 10, 20 more people throughout their day. And it just puts them in a better mood as well. So long winded answer, but both those two books really were impactful in many ways for me in 2016. And I probably will reread them once or twice over the next couple of years, just because I always put books off to the side on one of my shelves in my office that I want to reread and continually flip back through. You just inspired me to start a positive productivity, random act of kindness movement. I think I'm always surprised by how surprised other people are when I do just open up the door for them or hold it open, you know, stand there a couple more seconds while they're being pokey, getting up to the door. No, I'm not going to just let it close in your face but i know there's people out there who do and and it's sad you know what's it going to cost you just to wait two more seconds oh i i could not agree more and it's funny but you know when you're younger or when i was younger at least i know you'd kind of make a a snide comment or something when someone didn't hold it open for you but now i just you know you always try to do the extra thing and and this morning going to the gym uh, I was carrying my suit in my gym bag and a woman was maybe 30 feet ahead of me walking in and she waited for me and held the door open. I just, you know, I said, Hey, I really appreciate that. I thanked her and she had a really nice smile on her face and it just it had an impact on me. And I know she didn't do it because, you know, someone was watching her, you know, she did it because she saw I was carrying some stuff and, you know, she had a positive impact on me. And then when I was going out an hour or so later, at the gym, there were two women coming in and I just waited, you know, five seconds for both of them and held it open. And you never know one little impact you do can have on five, 10, 15, 20 people for that day, or maybe even the next day. You never know. I think I just 
I don't know if I was listening to a podcast or I saw it on the news, but I heard about this whole chain and I don't even remember where I'm such a great storyteller. Yeah. Um, <laughs> about somebody paying at a toll booth. Oh, there was somebody driving up to a toll booth and somebody just was um, tailgating and then went around them and was just being really rash and just had to get in front but the lady just let them go, and when she got up there, she found out that it had been paid. Oh, I, th- I heard it on the radio. I remember now. But the- so she paid for the person behind them, and then then the radio went on to talk about how there was a big chain of like twenty people somewhere else going through toll booths that had done the same thing, and it it goes so much in line with everything that you have just said. Oh. Okay. That's, that's Positive awesome. productivity. Cats in the background, but show must go on. <laughs> <laughs> that's so funny you mentioned that because I, I do remember either seeing that somewhere or reading it, but someone was mentioned, I think maybe it was on Facebook or something, someone shared that exact same story, but the, but the reality is because somebody paid for theirs and the next person, all the next people in the chain, all they were paying for was just one toll, but it paid it forward because it was paid for the next person so indirectly because one person made a decision to pay it forward then it had a positive impact on like you mentioned the next 15 or 20 people in cars and they were not paying anything more it was only the first person that paid more and that alone had such a positive impact and i can only imagine let's say that there were 20 people all those 20 people whether they were going to work or going home or wherever they definitely shared that story probably with 10, 15 people during that day or during that evening because it was something that rarely ever happens. Chris, I want to circle back around to you, though, before we wrap up the episode. What is your why? And I know we talked about it a little bit earlier, but what is your big why in No Quit Living? Um, That's a great question. And I guess to sum it up pretty quickly is, is life is tough and It's going to knock you down, but it's not important that you get knocked down because we're all going to continue to get knocked down. But it's more important that you get back up and you keep going. And unfortunately, I've encountered a couple tough parts of life. I had a younger sister who passed away. My brother-in-law passed away a couple years ago, and his wife was pregnant with twins at the time. And it just really made me think kind of about how precious life is. And I think to your comment earlier about the grocery store story, but also about the toll booth and paying it forward is my why is I like to help people and at no quit living. If we can make a positive impact on someone's day every day, even if it's through a tweet or through podcast or through something is, is I always feel that in today's day and age, there's so much negativity going around. If you read the newspaper or you watch the news, it's always negativity, negativity, negativity. And I just feel that in today's day and age, it's so important that you can really go out of your way to help somebody. And to your comment earlier, is whether it's a handwritten note, a quick little email, a text, a phone call, you have no idea how much positivity that could have on somebody and how much of a positive change that could have. And that might just be someone thinking about quitting a business or you know giving up a relationship or you know ending a friendship. Whatever it is, it could be something small or it could be something huge it's just so important and our why really is to help as many people as we can and not to do it selfishly because we want to get something back but just to do it really selfishly for that individual say you know what how can i help you or is there something i can help you with or there's something that i could do for you and when you ask that question and you listen to the answer i feel you'll find nine out of ten times a lot of people don't need crazy things you know a lot of people don't need a ton of money they don't need sometimes it's just a listening ear or sometimes it's you know what i've been trying to get in touch with this person or that person and i think if you go out of your way it's unbelievable and one thing that that i mentioned earlier is everybody's familiar with the term six degrees of separation at no quit living we talk about one degree of separation and by that i mean in today's technological age it's so easy to connect with people whether it's facebook google twitter linkedin Um, Instagram, there's so many ways that you can connect with somebody. And we just feel in our company is that there are so many ways every single day where you can go out of your way to help somebody. And like I said, you have no idea one little small act 
could be life changing for some person, but for their family and future as well. So our, our why really is just to get out there and, and help as many people as we can. And, and one thing I mentioned is I've been so fortunate, as I mentioned, to have spent a lot of time with some great people. And one of my big favorites is a guy named Bob Berg, who I've been fortunate to to have coffee with two or three times down in Florida. And he's a guy that doesn't owe me anything. He picked up his phone, responded to an email, and has been so giving of his time. So that's kind of really our, our why is that we know so many people have helped us get to this point. And, you know, if we can just give back to, to others, I, you know, it's something I think, A, we, we deserve to do, but I think it's something that you know, we should do because we've been so fortunate to have some people that went way above and beyond helping us. We need more people like you. <laughs> well, uh, like I said, I've, I've been from my mom and my dad down to all these mentors, quite a few I mentioned today. It's just it's really awesome when you can connect with somebody and then someone says to you, you know what, I'll give you 20 minutes or half an hour and you just just pay it forward and that's what i really believe is it's just going above and beyond and and doing the right thing and trying to be a good person chris where can listeners find out more about no quit living so they could they could go to my website which is noquitliving.com or you can follow me on twitter at noquitliving or for those that are interested in just connecting uh, one of the things i always do is i always share my personal email address because I, like I mentioned, is I've been so fortunate that people that have mentored me and responded to my messages. So the easiest way is just Chris at noquitliving.com. I check my emails often. Um, at night, I do not. I'm going to turn my phone off, now, like, like you said, or at least put it on uh, on Do Not Disturb. But those are the best three ways to, to get to me. Fabulous. Listeners, all of this awesome information, the books that we've been talking about, the 12... What was it called? The the your twelve step daily plan, or you have yep. an even more awesome title for it. And <laughs> Chris's email and all this great information is going to be in the show notes, which you can find at thekimsutton.com dot com forward slash pp zero six eight. Chris, I want to thank you so much for being here today, and I want to get you back on the show again because there is so much more than we could discuss and off the air we definitely need to talk about a book club because between the two of us we could probably fund a library <laughs> just with our book donations alone but thank you so much again no thank you and and the only way i will i will come back is if you agree to to be a guest on on our podcast as well so it's got to uh it's got to be an even an even trade without a doubt i'll be there thank you listeners so much And again, you can find the show notes at thekimsutton.com forward slash pp068. Hey there, this is Kim Sutton, host of the Positive Productivity Podcast. And I just want to take a quick moment to thank you for listening to this episode. If you enjoyed it and were inspired, I would love to hear your feedback. Please take a moment or two and visit the podcast on iTunes, Stitcher, iHeartRadio or on my website at thekimsutton.com to leave your rating or review. I'd also like to invite you to join the Positive Productivity Book Club and to find out more about my coaching packages by visiting thekimsutton.com. Until the next episode, I hope you have a positive and productive day.